to become selfless, you gotta become selfish first. You need to let other people learn with you. And this is what most agents, what newer agents say. Well, I'm new, nobody's gonna wanna hear from me. I actually think you're in a better place than I am because the- I'll be doing the interview. Well, it's pretty much an interview. Now, 100%. That's why I've been asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's why I continued. Like it naturally turned into, so I said, okay, I will go with the flow. That was awesome, man. Guys, today I'm in Toronto going to meet Jazz Thakur, the guy who is also known as Canada Gary V. So this guy is like, you know, super awesome, especially if you're a new agent, like this guy has a lot to share with you guys. So stay tuned, make sure you watch till the end because there is so much information that you can take on. And personally, like I asked so many questions that how I want to build my business, the sales business. So if you're a realtor, if you want to grow your business, stay tuned. People who don't know you, uh, just in a nutshell, in quick 30 seconds, who are you? What's your current, like, you know, sales side business look like, investing side business look like? For sure. Um, first and foremost, I'm a good looking Indian guy. Let's start there. Um, <laughs> and nice beard, though. Thank you, thank you. I'm starting just. <laughs> Trying out something new. Jazz Takar, um, entrepreneur here in Toronto, real estate broker. I have a team of um, 54 agents uh, and 11 support staff. I'm also a obsessed content creator um, because I think the best way to educate the public on whatever you're looking for, looking into doing, um, especially if you're a real estate agent and a mortgage broker, is to give away that information for free. And the best place to do that is on all the platforms that everyone is on so it's something that I take very seriously in terms of my content creation but uh, sales is kind of my 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 thing it's something that I've done um, and kind of knew at a very young age starting at 12 that I was going to be doing for some somewhat in customer service and sales and service uh, my whole life and so I started so how, how long you've been a realtor now a realtor I've been for 17 years um, and sales in total it's been now 27 to 28 years Wow. so yeah. like what is your like total you and your team volume like on and because um, I heard a number that I remember. Yeah, so we do we do we do seven hundred we help seven hundred families every single year. Seven hundred seven hundred wow. families um are very, very blessed. Um not only with the clients that actually allow us to serve them, but the fifty four agents that we have, I mean they're really like boots to the ground. So um somewhere I read or heard in another video you have like your total volume so far, like with you and your team is yeah. like over a billion? No, we're at probably a little over now 2.1 billion. 2.1 In In our, <laughs> our full team, yeah, in, so in terms of our sales. That's why I'm pumped up to get in more, like, you know, learn from you and deeper. So thank you so much. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you for having yeah. me, man. I really appreciate it. One of the biggest uh, well, questions, like, especially with the way you build the team. So this is like my personal challenge is like, you know, whom to bring in? When did you decide to bring that person on? To answer your question in a long-winded way, you hire when you realize that you just can't do the work. All, you can't get the work done and you can't grow, right? I think the question I get the most is, from real estate agents anyways, is who's the first person I should hire? Yeah. And I think it should be a executive assistant slash slash transaction coordinator. I think the one thing that real estate agents generally you're not good at is paperwork. Paperwork, yeah. Boom. <laughs> and it's the best to keep it in the family. Yeah, yeah. That brings me to some of the major questions that I get from a lot of agents who are just starting out, right? Like, how do I, you know, structure my commission splits? Yeah. So that, you know, my agents will succeed. At the same time, you know, I don't regret for hiring a buyer agent. Trial and error. It's like, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, 17 years I've been dealing with commission splits and I still haven't figured it out. Trial and error. What do you do like to keep those agents? Like one of the challenges that I've been having is like, you know, now I, I, I was able to bring the agents, but like, you know, some of them like leave after like four months, yep. even though like I was giving highly qualified leads yep. and at 50-50 split, like yep. it's, it's, it's interesting. Like what kind of some of the suggestions that you would you give someone like me? You need to spend time with them. It's the hard stuff, right? It's the, um, the stuff that most people would say that we don't have time for, but you gotta make time. You know, like, we just met for the first time. Yeah. 
Our relationship would be different if you and I had a drink every single month. I agree. So what's the, what's the common denominator in all that? Time. Time. And it's the one thing that is the hardest. Yeah. Whatever's worth it, it takes work. Yeah. That's, that leads to my next question, right? Like, you know, for someone who is watching this, uh, you know, a lot of my followers are like new agents who are like just getting into the business or just they're already in the business for one year, two years. Uh, and especially now this market situation has completely changed. What are some of the things that you're doing in your business that to, you know, um, thrive in this market situations as well? Sorry to interrupt you on your video. I have a quick announcement just 15 20 seconds i'm conducting a free webinar for real estate agents like you who wants to make six figure or seven figure income in this ever changing market because you know right now every listing is taking longer to sell every buyer is afraid to write an offer because interest rates are going up market is going to crash so how can you as a real estate agent make six figure seven figure income so that's what we're going to talk uh, in this webinar so make sure to click the link in the description a free webinar just for realtors like you. Make sure to share it with your friends. I'll see you there. It's, it's for me. It's always been the same when the market's doing very well and the mark and the market's changing as it is now. The one thing that we've never gone away from ever, 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 even when it was easier with the market because everything was selling, our investors were calling left, right, and center. We've always done outbound calls. 50 calls in that room. There's actually about 150 calls that get made every single day, five days a week outbound to my 11,500 people. Wow. Why, because, and, and really quickly, why I want the sure. new agents yeah. to really understand that is because once you get that skill, it doesn't matter what's happening in the market because now it just becomes a numbers game. Yeah. How many people can you call? You're not gonna do as many transactions in a down market. That's black and white numbers, that's easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you'll still have some of the market share because you're the one who's going out and calling. Now. To add to that really quickly, it's not calling and saying, hey, Diti, do you want to buy a house and sell a house? That's what my next question is like, what do you say? Because 100%. you know, that's, they Lead get calls education. every day, right? Lead with value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so overall macro thesis in for our real estate company is at all times we lead with education. We put all of our content is, is all from the perspective of educating people to do stuff on their own. What I actually like about that, and so for the newer agents, the bar set really low. In re like from a real estate agent perspective. It's That's like, a, there's not a lot of pros in it. Yeah. And I can say that, and I know you can say that because we're real estate agents, so we can yeah. speak about our own in that sense. Like the bar's just not set that high. 5% do 95% of the business. It's always been that. Yeah. 5%, 6% do 94 to 95% of the business. So if you, and do, if you do more than five to 10% of it. work, yeah. you can definitely survive. You definitely can survive. And as long as you don't try to manipulate people and try to convince people, you'll also have longevity. Yeah, relationship based. Relationship based, right? Like build relationships, not transactions. Yep. Especially when you start to get into the investing landscape, because call me biased, I think real estate is one of the best investments someone can make because you can touch, see it, and smell it, and it has an address, and it, like, the chances of it going somewhere is very, very rare. It's not like crypto that is <laughs> gone. <laughs> that brings to me another question that's, you know, being an Indian. So what, what, what's your, like, are you born and raised here, or like you came no, from I'm born India? And yeah, I'm born and raised in Toronto, um, the north part of Toronto in an area called uh, Rexdale. Mm -hmm. So um, your parents? Parents were born in Punjab, um, and they came to uh, Canada in 1973, 1974-ish. Right. In fact, we were supposed to, it's funny, if my father, uh, he, he went straight to Edmonton, because mm -hmm. he had a cousin there. Um, but after, I think it was like really quick, like two months or something, the job that he, he was at like a meat market, um, or a fish market, um, and they, they were closing down. Mm -hmm. Somebody called him that, somebody from the village that went to, came to Toronto and said, hey, there's a bunch of like uh, jobs here in Toronto. Why don't you just come check, check it, it out? Yeah. My mom and my eldest brother at that time are still back home in India. Um, and so he, he went to Toronto. He came here to Toronto. He found another job in the meat market. But this time, that also shut down. But to one of his, that same friend, I think it was, um, said, um, I'm going to go get my taxi license. And so my dad was like, okay, what the heck is that? Like, what do we just drive taxi all day? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, all right. And my dad then drove taxi for 
30 years or something like, like yeah, that, that's 32 like years. Like typical immigrant typical background, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. working hard, like from ground up. A hundred percent. No, um, f coming back to the business, like I I being an Indian, do you see that as an advantage? Like, you know, how do you? Now I do for sure, a hundred percent. I mean, especially in Toronto, it's the most multicultural city. I don't know, maybe second to Manhattan or something like that, but very, like in, in the country for sure, um, one or one A um, on the continent, and and um, it's different now. Yeah, but also like you know, um, the reason I was asking that you know a lot of people watch me like they're still like new immigrants like me who came from India, born and you know born and raised in India, but like you know coming here. Um, you know, being an Indian, like, you know, it's easy, easy to, to connect, connect with other Indians. Hundred percent. So there's definitely like, you know, those are like your first uh, two. Especially goals. if you can speak the language. Yeah. I think that's a big plus. Speak Punjabi? I can, 100 percent I can okay. speak Punjabi. Um, Hindi? Hindi, you know, it's weird because everyone in my family who speaks Punjabi, they understand Hindi and they speak Hindi. For some reason, something got lost in my brain where <laughs> I feel like they're two different languages. <laughs> Right, um, so I can't watch a Hindi movie without subtitles. Like I still need <laughs> subtitles, right? Um, Punjabi, there's there's still a lot of words um, that if like an outsider was kind of speaking to me, my mom and dad know to dumb it down for me um, and my brothers as well. Um, but I can make my way through a lot of conversations in Punjabi. In fact, like I've sold a lot of products like cars and homes and all that kind of stuff with Punjabi. In the, so I think to the new immigrants, that is a big help. Obviously, coming from any outside country into Canada, mm -hmm. to, the mindset is gonna help you. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to leave what is home for you to another country, like you got something in you that hopefully, that fire burning under your you know what, that that's gonna keep you. You have a strong enough why. Yeah. I think what's sometimes tougher with with, with people that maybe are born here and, 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 and they grew up with stuff, like a lot of money or whatever it may be, is that their why is not that strong. Right? So they true, yeah. Get. So like, you know, for someone who is new, what would you suggest like doing in their first year, second year? To be successful. Yeah, I think that you know you got to build it right from the ground up. There's a reason we call our media company mm -hmm. from the ground up because you got to have a strong foundation and real estate. I mean, you can't build a home on a swampy foundation, yep. and and the business part also can't be built on a swampy foundation. And 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 where you want to start with is making sure that you reach out to people that already know you, like you, and trust you. And again, not reaching out to them. Like if it was my first day in the business right now, I, I'm not gonna call them and say, hey, do you wanna buy and sell a house with me? That's not even what I'm asking for because I have no idea if they know anybody. Maybe their husband, like if I called her, well, her husband's a real estate yeah. agent. You know, it doesn't make <laughs> sense, right? So why not call and ask though? That's yeah. where I would start. So yeah. I would say, hey, Carolina, it's Jazz calling. How you doing? How's everything? Hey, I just want to let you know, I got my real estate license, but I'm not calling you. To, let, to ask you to buy or sell a home with me. I'm actually calling you to ask you if you have like a family realtor. You know yeah. how you have a family doctor and family dentist? Like yeah. you take your friend, like your whole family's been going to that. Do you have a family realtor? And she's gonna say one of two things. Yeah, my cousin's a real estate agent. I've been, my parents have been using. Great, I, the reason I was asking is because I didn't want to bother you in the future if you already have a relationship with somebody, right? Um, is it a strong relationship? Like, is it just somebody that you kind of know? Or is it like, there's no way in hell, if you needed to get real estate advice, you would only go to this person. If the second she says no, I'm gonna say, do you mind giving me your opinion on some of the marketing I'm gonna be doing? Great advice, love it, love it, yeah. Because we as humans, love to give our advice yep. and our opinion. Yep. We just love it. We lo the restaurant sucked yesterday, don't watch that movie. Yep don't talk to that guy. Yeah. Like it's just, we just like always, love to give always, opinions, yeah. right? And so I would then say, yes, you would, uh, if they said yes, uh, I, I would love to give my opinion on the marketing, I'm okay with that, great. I'm gonna send a couple of emails a month, I'm gonna do some content. Like, are you on the socials? Like, well, what do you mean by that, Jazz? Well, like, are you on Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, oh, you're, you are? Great, what's your profile? Okay, oh, I just followed you. Can you do me a favor? Can you follow me back as well? I'm really trying to grow this. And then I'm gonna do that one by one by one by one. 17 years, ask my, that I've been doing this, 27 years of sales. I always like to emphasize those numbers because I want people to know that like I'm still in it. Yeah. I'm not, like I love when people watch my content and stuff, 
but at the core, I'm a salesperson. I love this industry, and so that's why I like to mention that. But you ask any of my team members, and they'll always laugh and chuckle. If we go to Starbucks right now, or Tim Hortons, or the restaurant, I'm asking that person if they're on the socials. Mm. That's like, like that's other than a couple of videos that mind that maybe have popped. Other than that, all my subs and all my all my followers and everybody in my community is from this asking. Yeah, organic. And some of them hate going to Starbucks with me, my friends. Like, my, <laughs> they, because they're like, this guy's gonna do it. He's yeah. gonna say, it. yeah, I am. Yeah. Because my why is so strong, and I'm just not gonna let. I'm not, I'm not like, I, I don't have shame in that sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask somebody, hey, are you on socials? Yeah, great, do you follow me? No, da, da, and Seriously, I can connect to that because you know, that's what I used to do when I was like, started brand new, like before even I got started, yeah. like I yeah. was investing and I was like you know, going to networking groups and different things like, oh, oh, you, uh, I, I, sometimes I don't even take phone number, but I just follow on Facebook or Instagram. 100%. Like now it's different for yeah, sure. You don't they, even they, need to do yeah, that, right? Like because they, they as see you all more often, like guaranteed. You know, yeah. And then and then so going back to the conversation, if you're a new a newer agent, I'm gonna call everybody. I'm gonna make sure that they that they connect with me on on socials, and then I'm gonna start to actually produce content. I think yeah. what you did was brilliant. You told me like 32 seconds that we spoke before we kind of uh, started the camera, and you mentioned to me that you started to document even when you got your license. Yeah, like you get that. I think that was you know, one of the best things you did. Um, now that somebody has their license who's watching, then just document it. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid, and this is what most agents, what newer agents say, well, I'm new, nobody's gonna wanna hear from me. I actually think you're in a better place than I am because the questions you're gonna ask is a lot closer to the consumer. Yeah. Because you're so wet behind the ears is a term where you need to, you need to let other people learn with you. I, I will emphasize on that word. Like that's really key in my opinion because now like every question you get and you make content out of it, that's exactly what I used to do. Like, you know, oh, what's FinTrack? Or, you know, how do I write an offer? Like, you know, what's, what's the commercial? Deposit? Yeah. What's a deposit? What's the commission rate? What's how much do I have to put a deposit? Like, is there a mandatory? Like, that's All of it. that. And then, and then if you, because you're new, you have a lot of time because yep. you don't have clients yet. So yep. I would do exactly what you just said, Aditya, every single question. Yep. Then I would actually sit down with a mortgage broker for 25 minutes, 30 yep. minutes, record the whole conversation and send it to all your clients. Yeah. And don't at the end, you don't even have to say, and look, each to their own again. It might work for some, it might not work for others. Me, myself, I've never said call me, because then the yeah. little, I, I just like when they find me later, yeah. right? Like I don't want to come with the sales right away. I like to do the giving in the giving, and then I know I can ask a little yeah. later, right? Like the Gary Vee. hundred, why I completely stole jab, 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 right yeah. hook from him, yeah. right? Um, it's, it's, it's brilliant, why wouldn't you? Success is always left like, clues. That's exactly, exactly. That, it does make a lot of sense, like, yeah. because now you're giving and they're like, their stomach is full. 100%. Let me give back, like, let me give me business. You know? I hope, and then look, I think then you can actually, when you give a lot, then you, have the, you can have the audacity to ask. Yeah. I think some people just ask too soon. Yeah. You know, it's better to ask somebody for, like them buying you a coffee after you bought four, hmm. rather than just buying the one. You know, and here's like human nature. If the person's like a, a regular human being, after you bought them four, they're probably gonna buy you the fifth one. Yeah. Like they'll buy you the next one, right? Um, in terms of in terms of making sure that you do that recording with the mortgage broker or the or the or the real estate lawyer and all that, everyone in the like the people that are directly compensated with the real estate com uh, transaction, they're gonna want to sit down with you yep. because they also want exposure. Right, and so you just gotta make sure that you actually record that conversation and put it out to the world. Yeah, so how was it guys? <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Personally, I'm like, I, I have no words because you know, I learned so many things that I can take home and implement in my own business. So let me know what you learned in the comments below and make sure you know, help me to reach like 200 likes on this video. So hit that thumbs up button. And if you still haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe for more content like this or even better more. And make sure don't forget to follow Jazz on his Instagram and podcast because he has a lot of great content coming every day in day out. So check out there in the description. Until then, see you in the next videos.